It's time for Joy News Interactive. My pizza Sibid is here. Maps don't lie. Hello. Hello, Izzy. Yeah. You know, uh, the memo. You got the memo, the whole yeah, yeah, yellow. Yeah. The yellow, know, yellow thing. Yellow Friday. Can no, you? No, oh, no, look no. at us. We look so gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> but you know how to join the conversation on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are Joy News on TV. It rains, it pours, it floods. Every year, same story, same script, same headline, same hashtag. Are we not tired? Does it not bother you that this always happens? No change? Well, let me bring back this report from last year by Jojo Kwabena about the never-changing flood story. Even though I could go back many years, let's start from 2014. Now, many parts of the national capital uh, today have been inundated as choke drains have made it difficult for um, the where for rainwater to freely flow through the drains. The bus terminal, the Kwame Nkrumah Circle, was full and the residents of Accra had to scoop water from their homes as a result of the rains. But uh, this is not the first time Accra has been hit by floods and almost every year the story or the reasons being given for the floods are the same. In 2015, we reported again. The cycle of flood is here again, and year by year, major cities in the country get flooded. The reasons, as always, are the same. Lack of planning, pouring of waste into drains, and a host of other human activities. When will it ever stop? What will it take to save our cities from the perennial vulture cycle of flooding? We're still in the capital and on the flood. Several residents within Aveno in Accra were temporarily thrown out of their homes by the flash floods. The affected residents are unsure how or where to pass the night. Kemini Amano's report. Then the fire and flood disaster occurred, killing 150 people. Musicians sang about the flood disaster. <laughs> Politicians promise never again. The National Disaster Management Organization, the Hydrology Department of the Ministry of Water Resources, Works and Housing, and the city authorities will also work to coordinate the clearing and expansion of our waterways and the desilting of our drains. Drastic steps are necessary here if we are to permanently address this perennial problem. We'll intensify our efforts to expand and modernize our drainage system. But in 2016, we're back to the same script. Hydrological engineer at the National Disaster Management Organization, NADMO, Wise Ametafer, has blamed yesterday's flooding on blockages in channels leading to the Odor drain. In 2017, an elaborate plan was announced to once again end perennial flooding. The government will, in the coming days, announce a comprehensive plan to deal permanently with the perennial flooding in the capital, Accra. The city's mayor, Mohamed Ni Ejesoa, says the new comprehensive plan will focus on redesigning the drainage system. He made this known after touring some communities affected by the Friday morning downpour. Clearly, we are back to the same pointers again. Journalists have reported, musicians have sung about it, politicians have promised yet nothing has changed. I hope we'll not be back to the same situation in 2019. Jojo Kobner, Joy News. That was Jojo Kobner's report last year, but quickly before we go to Facebook, here's a picture story from this morning after the dawn rain.
and it seems like the story continues. Let's go to Facebook and see what you have been saying. Prince David also says, well, all I can say now is that the water doesn't remain in my compound or or is it because I live I live on a mountain? And this one's from Kweku who says the cleanest city in Africa. Um, indeed, Marcus Lawson says, can those politi political scams of our time learn anything from Holland as regards to these floods? Richard Frifa says the, the areas around the Odor River need to be re-engineered. Each time I take a look at the vast opportunity that is not harnessed, I feel sad. The water transportation on the Odor water sports, cruising and entertainment centers, etc. Ura Kweku says, beautiful, if they stop littering the place, flooding will stop. Obed then says, until we change our attitudes, we must accept that the floods have come to live with us. Now, this whole week we've been talking about President Akufado's comment about him not seeing enough women being dynamic and active. Well, that comment caused a lot of fire on and off social media from different personalities, groups of feminists, you name it. Now, today, three female ministers of state defended the president, the president's comment, and they believe he was bold in speaking the truth. And it's a call to action that's, that must be heeded by all gender activists. Now, we're asking you on Facebook, uh, did President Akufado simply articulate the hard, painful truth when he said not enough movement has been made by women in Ghana. We have a poll up on our Facebook page, and 70% says yes, he just spoke the truth. 30% said no, he was wrong. All right, let's see if we can get comments there. All right, we have uh, Melis says, relative, if the present level of effort made by Ghanaian women met his expectations, I'm sure he would applaud. On the other hand, if he expects so much more because he believes Ghanaian women deserve better, than they have now, he would definitely expect a lot more and so demand such from them to meet his expectations. All right, this one is from David who says, in the meantime, okay, First Lady, Akufado finally got to meet Aye and Nana uh, says, the president was spot on, he spoke the hard truth. Pakwe C says, 90% of women in Ghana are the executive directors of all the social media platforms. And Thomas Mensa says, the question is, have the women's front groups done enough so they could go home to sleep? Well, you know how to continue the conversation on our Facebook page, Joy News on TV. You know how to connect with us, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. I am Apito Sibiri. Yeah.